So I've gone ahead and entered in some data. So I have a variable called meals, and it is a, an array of type meal. And you can see the array starts here and ends here. And I have three meal instances here. And I use my meal struct. And I have, remember the meal struct has a name and an array of food items. So each meal has a name and an array of food items. So the first name is breakfast, and there's three food items that I've created with name and description. Again, food has a name and description. And you can see that I've gone through and made a breakfast, lunch, and dinner menu. Uh, and each of them have different amounts, and I want to show you that when we see these sections and cells. So let's take a second and implement some of these methods. So the number of sections, well, it looks like I have three meals, so I can just put three sections. But the problem with that is, what if some, maybe I have a, a another meal in here sometime, like a mid-morning snack, then I, I'd have to make sure to change this. So the better way to do that is I'm going to return the meals.count. This property will tell me exactly how many items are in this meals array, and that will be how many sections I want. Next is the number of rows in section. So how many rows are in each section? Well, let's see, this has going to have three rows, and that's going to have two rows, and that's going to have four rows, but I can only return one value. Well, that's a problem. I can't return three, two, four. So what we have to do is we have to find out which section I'm talking about and then return the number of items in that section. So the way to do that is well, I know I'm going to start with my meals array. And notice that it gives me this section, which is an integer. So I can use array subscripting to get which section I'm talking about. So if the section is 0, I'm talking about this. If it's 1, I'm talking about this. 2, it's about this. And then the property I want is food. And then since food is an array, I can get a count. So it finds out which section I'm talking about. It then uses the food property and gets a count of that. So it, it depends on which section I'm in. It'll give me the correct number of rows. So now I need to go ahead and configure myself as to what it looks like. So the first thing I have to do is it has a hard-coded reuse identifier. Well, remember mine was food cell. And to verify that, just to make sure, we can go back to storyboard. We can click on the cell. Make sure I select it. And the identifier is food cell. I always copy and paste it just to make sure I've spelled everything right. OK, perfect. So now I have to do, you see the comment here is configure the cell. Let's do that. So the first thing I need to do uh, is get which meal I'm talking about. So I'm going to say let meal equal meals, which is my array. And then you see this index path. Index path is a property that lets me get each row and section. So I'm going to start with index path dot section. So the first thing I'll do is get the section I'm in, and that will be the meal. And then I need to know which food item I'm, sorry, let, I need to know, need to know exactly which food item I'm talking about. So I'm going to start with my meal, and then, whoops, yeah, equal meal, the meal I just got from the line above, and I'm going to use the food property. And since it's an array, I can use subscripting. And which one do I want? Well, it depends on what row I'm looking at. So I can also use index path to get the row. So you see a lot of index path sections and index path rows when you're dealing with tables. So now I have the meal I'm looking at. I have the specific food item I'm looking at. Now I have to tell my cell to print that. So I'm going to start with cell which is defined here. 
So it's the cell at the particular one I'm looking at. And I want the text label of that cell. And it's an optional, so I'm going to put in the question mark to make it an optional. I'm going to let the text of it equal food.name. And remember, we made our cells of type subtitle. So those subtitles have a detail. So I'm going to do cell detail text label text equals food dot description. So let's take a second just to look over this one more time. So again, as I'm scrolling up and down, iOS is dequeuing these cells. So as one cell comes onto the page, it adds it to the list. When it goes off the page, it removes it from memory. So again, I'm using my prototype food cell as my default cell type. And I'm getting the current section and letting that be which meal I'm talking about. Then once I've picked the section, I say, well, what food am I talking about? So let's say it was breakfast. This would be row zero, one, and two. And it puts the appropriate name and description in that particular cell. So let's go ahead and run this and see what that looks like. And you can see that it is putting the breakfast section, lunch section, and dinner section. And I have the food name and the description in each cell. So you can see that the text label is equal to the food name and the detail is equal to the food description. And it calculates which cell I'm talking about by using the index path section and index path row. Let's pause this. The last method we have is title for header. Notice that our headers didn't have any titles. So again, we can use meals since it's our array. And notice that I have section as a parameter here. So I'll type in section. That's going to give me a particular meal, either zero, one, or two. And we've been dealing with a, oops, sorry. We've been dealing with a food property now we'll use the name property. So I'll just put dot name. That name will become the title for that header. So let's look at that, see what change that made. And now I have nice little titles for each section. So by setting up my data in an array, I can use the array values like count and the subscripting to get each item in that array and put it into a table cell. This We did this with just a, a few items. You could do this with thousands of items uh, if you have a good data source. So tables are pretty powerful. And again, if I had multiple meals, I could scroll up and down and see that. So this was just a very quick look at table view controllers. Hopefully, you'll be able to investigate this much more on your own.